You want to join me? You want to sit next to me? Come. Look who joined me. You can sit next to me, okay? I'm going to be filming. There you go. Oh, you want to sit on my lap? Okay. He's here now. Um, in case you're wondering why I look like I'm in the same place since my last video, because I am. I just filmed that. I've just finished. But I changed my top so that if you're watching one thing after the other, you don't get bored. Um, today we're talking about another book that is translated by Anton Herr, which is I Want to Die, But I Want to Eat Topoki. Uh, this is by Beck Sehi. I really hope that the title itself won't get flagged by YouTube as inappropriate because I do want to say the whole thing. I am not very um, well versed in what is and is not allowed on YouTube in terms of like speech, but obviously I try to keep it very decent, as decent as I can. But I speak the way I speak all the time. I don't try to censor myself, but I really hope like while I'm <laughs> reviewing this book, it won't be too hard. Taro, can I? Are you okay? All right. So, um, this is one of the very few hardcover books that I own, which I purchased not too long after it was published. And that's how much I wanted to read this book solely based on the title. I thought this is just ingenious. I love it. I love the whole like artwork on it, the whole thing. I know it's like depressing, but that's, I, I vibe with it. How, what can I say? I really wanted to read it. I hate the color scheme. Like if I got to pick, two colors that I wouldn't put together ever. It's purple, which is one of my least favorite colors. And this like ugly green, it kind of reminds me of the perks of being a wallflower book cover, which I also didn't like. Um, but anyways, the actual contents of the book are there's 12 chapters and throughout the, I can't, throughout the book, as you can see, I have annotated the crap out of it, stuff like that, like all over the pages. Um, I love the book, but a lot of it was in this conversation style more annotations um but what i mean let me show you one that i don't have stuff written all over the page so it would be more like this so you kind of have like me psychiatrist me psychiatrist and a lot of the chapters are her conversation that she recorded at the time um conversations of her kind of going through her issues and what she's dealing with with her psychiatrist and then the psychiatrist responding to her towards the end she does say that the psychiatrist was very like self-conscious in her publishing this because she didn't ask for permission but even the psychiatrist is like me being self-conscious is probably due to me having some kind of insecurities as well so we all deal with it at the end of the day i hope that no one will look too deep into what i'm saying in this book and it will help people and i think the whole idea of this book it's not too deep it's not anything groundbreaking but i personally loved it i found it really helpful it's one of those books that was so easy to read i think i read it like i don't know two days and i was done the author the narrator she didn't hold back on anything she put herself out there fully like her emotional self fully out there naked for people to see and dissect and the way she even talks about herself in this whole book the way she's kind of talking about her own issues with the psychiatrist she's so self-critical but in the most like like as if you're taking a chisel and you're just cutting her open and you're looking into her brain and everything it feels very intrusive and i sometimes felt like oh my god like i have felt like this before but i know for a fact that i've never say this out loud to anybody i myself have accepted that i've thought of those things and i myself have dealt with it in my own way but like talking to other people i don't know like that's the thing now i feel like i should i need to talk to people about these things but before reading this book i was like okay i thought nobody talks about these things so you know what you might not find that this book is the most revolutionary thing ever but i do think especially if you're in the world of like psychology if you are interested in psychology if you're interested in the human condition in general i do really recommend this book she's really really good and there are some parts where she kind of takes a step back and she talks about like suppose in the session with her psychiatrist she had like one session where she talked about something specific so later on she'll kind of write like a diary note about that particular part and she'll go over it she'll mull over it and she'll think like okay why did i say that what does that actually mean what have i done since that session and it's a progression where you see her very early on you know starting with like her most recent um relationship and she talks through that her the most immediate environment to her then she starts talking about her relationship with her parents her sister colleagues with work with self-image 
with um, eating, with food, and in general, I think in small fragments, she does go through everything that I feel like centers around someone in their 20s, 30s, just someone who is very, very much trying to get a feel for who they are as a person and struggling to do so because there is just so much that people project onto us. There's so much that we project onto other people and every single relationship that we have with people is so different. So when we interact with our brothers and sisters and moms and dads, that's very, we get a very different image and a very different reflection of us back. Whereas when we interact with our friends and our partners, we get a very different reflection. So sometimes it's hard to say who we really are and how people really see us. How I see it as for Big Zahi, the main issue that she had was she was not very aware of where she was lacking. She really was quite interested in what people thought about her, but she didn't know why she cared so much. And she was quite, I would say, self-critical, but in a way that she thought it was a good thing to constantly be like, oh, it's probably because I'm like this, it's probably because I'm like that. But constantly she would keep finding the problem to be herself and she would never really see how other people around her or situations around her could also be the problem she tended to make put herself in the center of everything some people are really bad at doing that they never put the blame on themselves they like project on everything else but in her case she was kind of like this sponge absorbing like okay that must be my fault that must be because i'm like this i must not have this because i'm like that and it came to the point where even the psychiatrist was just like okay you're getting to that point again we need to think more um, critically of everything else around you and less critically about yourself and another thing that was like so glaringly obvious to me that i do too is this black and white thinking where like if one thing goes wrong in my life i'm like everything is shit i hate everything nothing's gonna work out and if one thing good happens i'm like totally motivated if one person says one thing that I don't like or make, makes me feel like they don't really like me, I just put a blanket statement like that person must hate me so I'm not gonna try with them anymore. That friend must hate me. But like I don't do that as much but I see how these types of small things can add up. Definitely I take small things to be very big and there's a reason for that because I think like I put in a lot of effort into each interaction that I have with people I try to be very mindful of how I treat people what I say to them I don't appreciate people generally just throwing words at me and not really critically thinking about that first um, you don't have to think before everything you say to me but I think some things if you're saying that again and again or if you're saying these things to people it might kind of makes me think what where it came from in the first place but sometimes it's good to be critical with people directly around you because that does affect you a lot. But in general sense, like in the people at work or um, just acquaintances, I don't really give too much thought about what people say. So I think it's a matter of finding the balance. Um, so the, yeah, the black and white thinking was quite interesting. Um, another part where she talked about was thinking always in extremes. Like I have to... Uh, it, if I don't succeed in something doesn't mean that the whole project was a failure or my time was wasted like sometimes I can just enjoy the process of doing something without always succeeding in it I can enjoy the process of learning something even if I fail in the exam so the whole idea that a thing was only valuable like my time is only valuable or something is only valuable when I receive the end product so I'm always working towards goals instead of like thinking I'm in the process of achieving the goal and the process really means nothing to me uh, and I'm being honest and I think the author also had that same issue like right now I'm sitting here filming up until this goes live this whole time period means nothing because if, unless I complete something that I started and I think that could be good and bad because it's good that you are very mindful of how you're spending your time it's bad in the sense that you are not you know like you're not really giving yourself the credit of actually starting things or going through with certain ideas that you have and sometimes midway you might think that this is not really what I enjoy so that's another part um, apart from that, there were so many things in the book that I love, like the annotations I had, but I feel like some of this was just so personal. I think for the first time, this is also a book that I wouldn't let anyone borrow from me, because I do feel like I wrote down a lot of things where I'm like, oh my god, this is me, this, this is me. Some things like, your self-esteem determines how you feel about the sincerity of others. And sometimes I do feel like I do question a lot if someone's like sincere, like I find it so hard to open up to people. 
and I wonder what that says about me as a person. Um, you can f enjoy the freedom of your own thoughts instead of thinking I must not have these thoughts. So sometimes, you know, we have these thoughts in our head that we're like, oh my god, I shouldn't be thinking like that or... But like, it's just about human imagination freedom. <laughs> I don't know if that's a real term, I just made it up. But just the f giving yourself the um, opportunity, the freedom to think whatever you want to think. Just think it, hypotheticals, this and that, and then get it out of your system. It's okay to have very messed up thoughts even, like, as long as you're not doing something that's messed up. Um, and I don't mean that in like about thinking about like committing a crime i mean so more like oh you know what if i don't go through with this you know what will happen will my life end will i not be successful it's okay to let yourself sometimes even go ahead and think negative thoughts or like okay if this doesn't happen if um i get dumped on the altar like what's my plan b plan b is always a good thing i i'm a big um supporter for plan b this part really did resonate with me when the psychiatrist was like why don't you complain? Like the author was saying, like people always come and tell me about their problems, but I'm also going through shit. Like why do they always come and tell me? Like do they not understand that I might also be going through shit? I just hated that people use me as a sponge to, you know, kind of like use me like a psychiatrist and tell me their problems all the time. And the person was like, do you ever tell them that you're going through stuff? And she's like, not really. And then she's like, you will always underestimate or overestimate how much people know about you but actually unless you tell people that you're going through a lot of hard stuff most people are like she's fine and i agree i feel like i never show the down part of my life i say that i'm going through some shit but i never say like exactly what it is i don't share uh, i still am not in the place where i like to share but i do see how people might just be completely oblivious to the fact and um, expect things from you that you might not want to give or you might not be in a place to give um so the psychiatrist says in response to this, you're attempting to silence your own complaints by thinking, at least I'm better off than them. And the world is so much, and the world is full of so much suffering that it's easiest thing to find people who are having a harder time than you. And the thing is like the idea of subjective happiness. Sometimes we are not evil because we like, you know, when someone says like they're going through shit and a part of us, like we're not happy, but we also think like, oh, at least my life is not that shit, I guess. And I don't think it's a selfish or a terrible thing to say, because I think it's just how we are, like, we are going through so much and we sometimes are just a bit grateful that, oh my god, like, I know my life is shit, but it could have been worse, like, I could have been going through that. I think it's more that than actually uh, being like, oh, haha, ha, I'm so happy that my life is better than you. It's not that. So it's kind of like that kind of freedom to think these thoughts and not think that you're a horrible person all the time. Forgetfulness can be liberating. Um, so basically this part is when the person talks about how she surveils herself so she like rec records herself when she's having conversations with people sometimes and she like record herself doing stuff and then she'll critically like look at herself and review it and like that is so messed up because forgetfulness is sometimes the best thing like remember when you have a conversation and like you keep thinking about it again and again that's the worst thing sometimes i come out of like interviews or really important things that happen in my life and i play an audiobook or i play like a mukbang or a stephanie sue video or something that'll completely distract myself and i don't have to think about that situation anymore because the more i think about it the more i create hypotheticals in my head i'll dwell on things too much and from there it's just a downward spiral where i'll overthink everything it's so much better to just like get out of something and be like there's nothing i can do differently about it right now that's it, it's in my past, let's just move on. Along with that, there was like a thousand other incredible little pieces and things that she put in there. So anything else by the author, I would definitely read. I don't know if I should call this fiction or non-fiction or autobiographical because personally, I cannot tell you what genre this book fits in. But for anyone who just wants a very, I could say light read, no, a very quick read, but something that is also quite reflective and might make you think about yourself instead of telling you how you should do it you know self-help books are like you should do this you should do that no this is the kind of self-help books that i feel like it actually helps people so pick it up and let me know if you enjoy and i'll see you next time